Hi guys, how's it going and welcome back to another episode of the Manchester United career mode on FIFA 17. We're up to episode number 12 of the series now and we're really getting stuck into things in the middle of this first season in charge and we are smack bang in the middle of the January transfer window. Uh, but if you have missed any of the previous episodes, highly recommend you go and check those out before we continue any further. Uh, so there's links in the eye in the top right hand corner of your screen and there's links in the description beneath the video as well to the playlist. But if you're excited for this video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe if you're new. I've got my United shirt on. There's no scarf today, unfortunately, but let's crack on. Okay, we've had a couple of press conference questions from you guys in the comments section of the last episode. Firstly, Connor Lambert has asked, with the ages of Latan and Rashford still being quite young, how do you think? Uh, do you think you'll be focusing on a world-class strike in the summer? Maybe someone like Griezmann, and with a colossal transfer budget, maybe late, uh, maybe later the balance and sign someone like Neymar. Uh, so you're asking me to sign Griezmann and Neymar. Uh, or whether we would. Um, maybe Griezmann. Neymar, I'm not entirely sure because I think I want to give more chance to Martial, especially in that left-hand side of the pitch. Uh, Zlatan, unfortunately, we signed to a uh, we signed him to a new contract. Well, not unfortunately, but but we signed him to a new contract uh, for another year extension. So he's going to be with us next season, unless we decide to maybe sell him in the future in the summer. We could potentially do that. Uh, Rashford, obviously, is going to be with us. But he's 80 himself, 80 rated. So he's definitely going to play a big part, uh, probably even bigger part next season. Uh, but we probably will look at a, uh, a world-class striker. And a lot of you have mentioned about Griezmann. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to at least scout him and set my scouts on him now and to scout him for the next six months. And then potentially we can look at him in the summer maybe to bring in along with a couple of others. We've got to try and get a couple of ideas of who we could potentially bring in as that pivotal number nine that we uh, that we could do with. Um, another question from one of you guys is from Jonathan Alisantoso. I'm sorry if I've butchered your name there. Uh, but he's, ha he's asked how your comments about your performance in this career mode. I'm guessing you're asking me to comment about the performance. Um, we've done okay, we're doing pretty well, we're quite clear, quite a good lead at the top of the Premier League, which is obviously the main objective um, this season, and to get back into the Champions League next season, uh, but yeah, we're doing quite well in the league, uh, Europa League we are through to the knockout stages, so can't really ask for much more on that, I think we're unbeaten in our group stage as well, uh, FA Cup we're in the early stages of, obviously the League Cup we got knocked out quite early on, which is a little bit disappointing, um, but it was, I have to say, the very much low down on the list, the League Cup of the priorities that we set out at the start of the season. So that's going to be it for the press conference questions from the last episode. If you want to get any uh, press conference questions in for the next episode, make sure to bung your press conference questions in the comment section of this video after you've watched it. Then I don't go and answer the question before you've had time to ask it. Uh, so yeah, make sure to leave your question and I'll answer it next time. And we left off the last episode in top spot in the Premier League with a whopping 12-point gap between ourselves and Everton. Really extended the gap in the uh, last couple of episodes over the Merseyside club and our City rivals are in third position. Although City do have two games in hand, so if they won both of those, the lead would be down to actually six points. So it would be a little... Um, a little bit tighter than it is now, quite, to be honest. Okay, with us being still in the middle of the January transfer window, there's still a bit of transfer activity get to get through. Uh, so that might uh, eat up a lot of the time this episode. So the only two games I can say for certain that we're going to play in this episode are going to be against Newcastle United in the fourth round of the FA Cup. And then we've got a game against Hull City in the Barclays Prem... Well, not Barclays, sorry, in the Premier League. Uh, if we do have time, we will end up playing the third and final game, which will be against champions Leicester City. But as I say, with the January transfer window in full effect, we might only get those two games played. And I asked you guys in the last episode whether we should go ahead and sign Julian Weigel 
for 14.5 million on a 50,000 per week deal. And you guys said I should sign him and bring him to Manchester United, the youngster. And that's exactly what we are going to do. So that's our second signing of the transfer window. OK, and I've brought both the, the new signings, LaFont and Weigel, into the training sessions. Alongside the returning Tuanzebe and Fosu Mensa are also back in training. Along with 81 rated now, Marcus Rashford. So let's see how they get on. Hopefully a little bit of progress to start off with. And decent. Weigel gets an A. That's a decent start for him. Tuanzebe probably made the most progress. OK, we've had another transfer offer for Memphis Depay. This time from Red Bull Leipzig. Do you know what? I'm going to keep him for now. Maybe in the summer we might let him go. But for now, I think we're going to keep hold of, uh, hold of Depay, I think. Having said that, though, uh, I forgot that in the last episode, we actually counter-offered uh, Dortmund's uh, offer for Memphis Depay to 35.5 million. And the German team have gone ahead and matched it. So, even though he's had a decent season, uh, start to the season with us, and I didn't particularly want to let him go, it looks like Memphis could be out the door. And that £8.5 million pound offer from Tin Yedva uh, from Leverkusen, the 21-year-old right-back, has been accepted. So, we're going to offer him a contract and then decide whether we want to go ahead and pursue buying him. He wants 45000 a week. That's not a problem. And we've also had our £26.5 million pound off for Sol accepted as well from Atletico Madrid. Uh, now, he wants four years. Again, we're going to offer the contract, then decide whether we actually want to keep it, uh, go for him or not. Because uh, it'd be interesting to see if we've actually, if EA have actually fixed the glitch last year where people who were coming from abroad kicked up a fuss and didn't want to move abroad. And there you go. Unfortunately, there is the confirmation. Memphis Depay has left Old Trafford to go to Dortmund. Okay, and Tim Yedva has accepted the deal that we've just offered him. Uh, I'm going to stall it for the time being. Uh, I would like some more information on that Iorfa guy from uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers. We did set a scout report out on him, but I've never, not had anything back, so I might need to look at that. And I'm going to do the same for Sol, who's also accepted the deal. Uh, but now, obviously, with Memphis Depay leaving, we may have to look at bringing in another left winger. OK, we've had a scout report back on Dominic Iorfa from Wolverhampton Wanderers, the 21-year-old English right-back. Uh, he's only 71 rated, but I've heard that he um, grows very, very quickly and uh, to a very high potential as well. And one of you guys actually wanted me to get him so he's going to probably take priority over Tim Yedva even though Yedva is a high, of a higher rating right now uh, so we're going to go into Wol we're going to go to Wolves and ask what they actually want for him but enough of all the transfer talk it's now time for our match in the fourth round of the FA Cup away at St James's against Newcastle United and you can see it is top of the Premier League against top of the championship newcastle united four points clear of norwich they look favorites to go up and um, they've only lost one game all season as well not going to be an easy game uh, even though they are a league below us okay here we are the emirates fa cup the horrible graphics are back we're at st james's park in the fourth round come on boys let's make it into the fifth let's go a bit further than we did in the league cup and there is the confirmation we are giving debuts to both Julian Weigel and Alban Lafont, the new signings in the team straight away. Okay, Newcastle United line up with Sells, Gamez, Clark and Bemba, Lazar, Kobeck, Teote, Matt Ritchie, Atsu, Diame, and the Beast, Mitrovic leading the line. And United, we're going with Lafont in goal, Valencia, Bay, Phil Jones, obviously a lot of defensive uh, absentees due to injury. Luke Shaw, Julian Weigel, Bastian Schweinsteiger, Paul Pogba, Juan Mata, Marcus Rashford through the middle and Anthony Martial on the left-hand side. Oh, and Rashford's in there already. He's just an animal, Rashford. Shoots! Excellent save by Sells. We're almost 1-0 up within the first three minutes. Back inside, Paul Pogba hits one off the bar! We've, oh, we could have been 2-0 up in the first couple of minutes. Mitrovic, which returns ahead of Diame. He's hit, he's hit the post as well. Both teams have hit the woodwork. That's a terrible pass out, but Pogba does well. Schweinsteiger. Pogba. Brought down. Has to be a penalty. Clumsy challenge by Czech Teote. We've got another penalty in another episode. 
within the first quarter of an hour. I can't say it's not deserved. I mean, he turns him there. That is an awful foul. It wasn't TLT either. It was what, Lazar, maybe? Pogba to take the penalty this time. Pogba against Sells. Lovely penalty. Keeper doesn't move. And we're 1-0 up. The dab comes out to play. And it should have come out a long while ago, let's be honest. Steps up Pogba. Top goal scorer in the Premier League this season. Just keeper doesn't even move. Sells. Good, confident penalty. We're do doing better with them. We're doing better with them in recent weeks. Get in, boys. The army. It's one from distance. <sighs> Not far off, you know. Not far off. We didn't close him down anywhere near enough. Pogba gets it. Rot down. Is that not a penalty ref? It has to be. Another clumsy challenge on this time from Colback on Pogba. Definite penalty. What are you doing, Colback? Pogba again. Is it the same outcome? No, this time it's a good save by Sells. Pogba. Schweinsteiger. Mata. It's a lovely turn. Juan Mata. Juan Mata makes it 2-0. It wasn't long after the penalty that we've doubled our lead, but we could have been winning this three or four. Well worked, patient build up. Matter, the defender gets too close to him, manages to wriggle past him. Lovely shot past Sells. That's 2 0. Get in. Long for half time anyway. We're going in 2 0 up. As I say, it should be three or four, to be perfectly honest, but we've played well. Uh, re Newcastle really haven't had that many chances other than the, the one that cannoned off the post. Clark, Lazar, it's intercepted. Rashford, Martial, Martial makes it 3-0, uh, absolutely calamitous defending on Newcastle's part, absolute masters of their own downfall, Martial putting the pressure on, plays it into Rashford, good goalkeeping but it just falls kindly for Martial, he just curls it past Sells to put us 3-0 up, down the line, Luke Shaw will get that easily, Bay, that is a terrible pass from Bay. Good save by Lafont. The first time he's really been called into action, but he wins that back. Looking for Wayne Rooney. Is this for? It is for Wayne Rooney. Gets in on the act. I think that might only be his second goal of the season, uh, but he gets on the act. The uh, the veteran. Nice ball in here to Rashford. Just holds it up, plays it into Rooney, and even he can't miss that. It's a good finish. Pass sells, and there's the full time whistle that puts Newcastle out of the misery. 4-0 winners, and it could have been double that. And there you go. I mean, they didn't, according to the stats, at least, they didn't even have a shot on target, but we all know they did. Uh, we had nine shots, seven on target. Only uh, only four goals, though. Uh, but we did okay. Uh, Rashford got man of the match. No real surprise. Uh, Pogba had a good game, but also good turnouts for both debutants Weigel and Lafont. Okay, and we've had a transfer offer from Everton for Phil Jones. Now... I want him to go, by all means. I don't really want to keep him. Although, to be fair, he has played twice and we've had two clean sheets. But, with the lack of options that we've got at centre-back with all the injuries at the minute, I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to stall it for the time being to see how long some of the other players are injured. If it's only a matter of weeks, I might sell him. If it's going to be a month or more... Probably going to have to keep him just, just for cover more than anything else. Okay, so Tuenzebe is out, going to be out for five days. Daily Blint's the big one. He's going to be out for seven weeks. Um, Chris Small's going to be out for two weeks. Okay, so as I say, I'm just going to accept this uh, and use Axel Tuenzebe as our centre-back um, or third choice centre... Uh, sorry, sorry, fourth choice centre-back once everyone's fit. Okay, and Wolverhampton Wanderers have got back to us with their valuation of Dominic Ayofa, the 21-year-old right back. Uh, they only want 3.1 million for him. I'm going to try and counter to 2.5 uh, to see if we can get him a little bit cheaper. Uh, he should be decent, pretty decent on wages as well, to be honest. And there is confirmation that Phil Jones has left Manchester United. His injury-prone run at Old Trafford has come to an end. He's gone to Goodison Park. Uh, 13 million we sold him for, we get 10.5. But on the other side of the uh, coin, Chris Smalling has returned from his injuries, joined first team training. So hopefully in the next week or two, he should be back, uh, able to play in the first team. Okay, we've got our next game now, this time in the Premier League at home against Hull City. Uh, Hull City are in 17th position, so they're fighting tooth and nail against relegation. Uh, as I say, we've got a 12 point lead at the top, so hoping to uh, extend that lead with a win today against Hull City 
So let's just crack on. Okay, and we'll line up with David De Gea, Matteo Damian, Eric Bay, Marcus Rowe, Luke Shaw, Morgan Schneiderlin, Bastian Schweinsteiger, Paul Pogba, Jesse Lingard, Anthony Martial and Zlatan Ibrahimovic who comes and takes the place of Marcus Rashford. And Hull City, the visitors are lined up with Marshall, Arabadjo, Bruce Davis, Robertson, Myler, El Mohamedi, Maloney, Mason, Klukas and M. Bakani. We've got to watch out for the big man up from M. Bakani. If you've seen my Ultimate Team Road to Glory series, M. Bakani is a massive, massive, massive danger. Kleinsteiger, Lingard, lovely turn by Lingard. Oh, he gets it back, Lingard, hits one. Pogba! Pogba's on hand to make it 1-0. Who else? And the signature dab is coming out within quarter of an hour. He, uh, he is scoring some goals this season from uh, midfield. Lingard did really well there, persistently as well. Poor goalkeeping, has to be said. And Pogba's in the, the man in the right place at the right time to just slot it home. Get him 1-0 up. Tackle by Schweinsteiger. Into Zlatan. Opens up, hits one. What a finish from Zlatan. Pick that one out. He's not scored that many goals recently, Zlatan, but that is an absolute screamer. Schweinsteiger does well, gives it to the other veteran. It rounded and it actually goes through Curtis Davis's legs into the top corner of the goal. Marshall is getting absolutely nowhere near it. Get in, boys. 2 0 up, the big man strikes. Pogba. Schweinsteiger. Into Jesse Lingard. Oh, just gets enough on it, the goalkeeper, Marshall. That's the half time whistle going in 2 0 up. We've, uh, we've been pretty dominant, to be perfectly honest. Hull City really not had that much threat going forward. And look at this, it's Embakani. He's clean through. They played that really well. And he's missed it. That's a great chance for Hull City to get back into this game. Almost caught on the counter. They've hardly had a shot. To be on his side, I've been really gutted if that had gone in. Woeful effort. Schneiderlin. Opens up for Rooney. Pings one just over the bar. Really close. There's the final whistle. It finishes 2-0. Second half, we were pretty pretty awful, to be perfectly honest. And we let uh, Hull in the game a little bit. And we were lucky that they didn't at least get one goal back. But uh, finishes 2-0. Scrappy game, but we'll take the three points and move on. And there you go, thoroughly deserved, to be perfectly honest. Seven shots, four on target. They had no shots on target out of three. Uh, as I say, we just let them in a little bit too much in the second half. Uh, man of the match went to Paul Pogba, who went off halfway through the second half. 8.8 .8 rating, decent performance. Okay, and we are now into transfer deadline day. Obviously, we're going to try and look at getting... A couple of little um, deals sewn up before the end of the transfer window. Okay, what with Memphis Depay leaving earlier in the transfer window, um, we probably need another player in the left wing spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for Maxwell Cornet, or Cornet, or Cornet, whatever you want to call him. Um, they want £10 million for him, Leon. We're going to go in with an £8.75 million pound offer. See if they accept that. What will it be in transfer deadline day? We should hear back quite soon. As far as the sole uh, bid from Atletico Madrid of £26.5 million, I think I'm going to reject it. I don't think we're going to sign him quite yet. Might go back in for him in the summer, uh, but quite not right now. I think we don't... Yeah, I don't think we want to spend that much money on a, uh, another player. Same with Ten Yedva, uh, although we'll still keep him as a backup for Iorfa, should that not come through. Okay, so the bid for Iorfa has come through. He wants four-year deal at 25000 I'm pretty sure we can cover that. And also, Leon have accepted the offer for uh, Maxwell Cornet, or Cornet. Uh, they want 45000 they want per, he wants per week. Okay, and Iorfa has accepted that contract that we offered him, so we're going to bring him into the club. That's a decent young backup right back that we've got right there. And also, Corne has also accepted our offer, so we're going to bring him in as well. I'm just looking at some of the other top deals that have gone through. You can see Willem Carvalho has gone to uh, Tottenham. Uh, Oscar has gone from Chelsea to Bayern Munich. Um, and also, obviously, Memphis Depay going to Dortmund. Okay, and that is the tail end of transfer deadline day. We've done all our business. Pretty, pretty happy with uh, the players we've been able to bring in. And you can see there that we are leaving the episode 
with a 15 point gap between ourselves and Everton and Manchester City. They've both got games in hand, but even if they both won their games in hand, uh, they'd only be they'd be nine points off us, so they've dropped even further behind uh, Everton. Really, really, really hit the self-destruct button. Okay, guys, so that is where we're going to leave off things. Again, apologies that it's only two games, but obviously we've had a lot of transfer activity to get through, uh, so I hope you don't mind that. We're going to be kicking on with three games in the episodes from here after uh, towards the end of the season. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. Please, with some of the players we've been able to bring in. Obviously, the majority of them are what you guys have suggested. So I hope you like that. If you have enjoyed this episode, make sure to smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe as well. Uh, also, as I say, if you want to get your press conference questions in, make sure to whack them in the comment section beneath the video. I'll answer them next episode. Head on over to Twitter, give us a cheeky follow at Fudgy underscore FC, and I'll catch you guys next time.